Honda on and off road motorcycles. 70 to 350 cc. Hey, there hasn't been a lot of XR updates. We are doing stuff. I've been getting parts in. We got tons of parts. That's parts. And there's some stuff there. And obviously, the tank is still red. So I gave up on that. And of course the bike's still just sitting over there. I know. I decided to save you guys the trouble of showing me cleaning this and the linkages up here. I was cleaning these things and I remembered, oh yeah, they come, the new ones come in the kit. Anyway, it got cold too, man. It got cold out. The deal is we got a lot of parts that have been coming in for the XR from sponsors and from other stuff we've just been ordering. The thing is the parts that we need like right now aren't here yet. So it's kind of why things have been a little bit of a slow drag. The wheels alone take like three weeks to build once you come up with all the colors you're gonna and stuff you're gonna do. Which I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You'll get to see when they show up. That should be pretty soon. There's so many cool trick parts over there, and there's other trick stuff that other sponsors are sending. This bike has been such a hunk of shit, dude. It was it was way worse than I thought it was. You know, sponsors are coming through a lot of really cool big stuff on there, and trying not to get like just nickeled and dime for all the small things we have to get. I've been using the funds from the Big Red Pig shirts, and uh, it's really great. We actually got quite a good little chunk of change off of that, and we've just about all burnt through it. So if you haven't bought a Big Red Pig shirt, um, seriously, it would be helpful. The way it's come is through sponsors. A lot of a lot of the big money is coming through sponsors, and they're sh throwing their flagship products at this thing. I know I've done some rough calculations. The money we've already got into this thing, just in parts coming and parts here, is like probably should have bought a cleaner XR. Uh, there was definitely for a few grand more some clear ones, but hey, we're in it now, man, and uh, it'll be sweet when it's done. It's gonna be a great bike. But today, today, I'm taking my swing arm in my linkage, and I'm also gonna clean the shock up here in a second and clean the forks up, take them somewhere to get them custom tuned, rebuilt and tuned. I'm sure they've never been rebuilt, or maybe like 10 years ago or something. Then you might be going, now Jake, why don't you just rebuild this thing yourself? You're a mechanic. I totally could do that. I could order new seals and bushings for it, tear it down and throw it back together. This is a super simple fork and it wouldn't be too hard to rebuild. The shock's a little harder to blow apart and really re uh, redo it, but I've, I've done it plenty of times. It's not that hard to do. I could even retune it to some degree. You know, I could get a little bit heavier springs for it, maybe change the fluid uh, height or the weight slightly. Uh, I've done stuff like that in the past and got an okay suspension out of it but I really want to get properly done suspension for this bike and that's something that you know I'm not trying to comp out yes I am a mechanic I know how to do a lot of this work but when it comes to really high-tech suspension tuning um, that's kind of a special this thing it's a specialty thing there's people out there that are that's what they do uh, so I got a guy I'm gonna head to here in just a minute I'm gonna bring all my stuff to he's gonna do some work to it and get it actually tuned like really tuned for for my weight for my riding style uh, taking it to another level you know I've been on bikes with really well tuned suspension now a handful of times I mean like really well tuned and set up and it, it man it spoils you I know a lot of y'all are gonna want me to go with the whole new front end you know put like a CR 450 front end on the bike so it can have inverted forks I've kind of gone over this briefly before one is you have inverted forks and you build a mud on supermoto wheels it just drives dirt directly to the fork seal. I think it's like a really big oversight with supermotos. But you know, it's one thing if you have a race supermoto, but if you actually have a street supermoto, you're gonna go play with your friends and off-road it. Um, I mean, I've had it both ways, and I can tell you my old DRZ with conventional forks. I only ever rebuilt those forks once. With my WR, with way less time on it, I think that went through three sets of fork seals. But mainly, just because these forks are not that bad, and with some modifications that the shop knows how to do, they know some trick stuff to do with it, and they can get it working really good. Remember, this bike's gonna be 99% of the time as a street bike or dirt bike riding around in the trails. Um, I might take it to the track a handful of times, but its main its main purpose is going to be as a street bike. And honestly, these forks are the same forks they ran in the Baja 1000, and those guys, if they work for them, they'll work for me. People like how those forks look. Converted forks are the best because they look cool, and fuel injection is the best because uh, because it's got the best response. It's like, do you have any experience any other way? No, not really, but I, I read it on a form. Anyways, I'm going to knock some more of the grease off this. I'm not going to film it because you've already seen that process a hundred times. I'm going to try to bring this to them not as a big, greasy, disgusting. Pig. I think the lamest thing in the world is just carbon fiber stick over things. Not bad. My last jug I bought of this, by the way, you guys see how liberally I use this. The last jug I had of this lasted me almost three years. I highly suggest you spend 20 bucks and buy you one of those. Somebody who's been a mechanic myself, I can't just, I, I hate to bring it to them all greasy and nasty because I know they're going to have to mess with it. First job I worked out working on uh, Polaris's and people bringing them side by sides, just caked in mud, swamped out. Like, yeah, can you do an oil change on it? You're like, yeah, sure. After I shovel away five pounds of mud and find the, uh, the drain plug there, no problem, sir. Right. 
fix it. Oh, thank you, sir. It's been a little over five weeks since I dropped the suspension off. This project is just dragging, man. I keep wearing Supermoto things. That way it makes it real, right? There it is. My DRZ I used to have back in the day was an old 2001. Look, I rattle canned it black because I was, I was poe. I didn't like it being white. I had a full muzzy on it. A rash, not even that bad. I placed it with a super loud D&D can. It was hilarious. I originally had the Cherubis equipment for oversized bars, but then I would buy the cheapo uh, eBay, Amazon knockoff Cherubis this piece because I was going through them like an idiot. You can tell that this thing's just been absolutely slammed into the ground. All the stuff off the old old DRZ. That thing was a tank, man. Anyway, the suspension shop isn't screwing me or anything. They're in the same boat I've been in for a long time. They're waiting on parts. I was hoping to combine the beginning of this video with the end of the suspension stuff and make that into one video, but I haven't talked to them. Yeah, yesterday they called me up to give me an update. Sounds like it won't be ready until next year. Now we can do some stuff in the meantime. So I guess we'll just have to we'll have to pick that back up when we get it. Also, oddly enough, uh, if you remember, I was pulling into SMS Racing there. They're um, combining with their other store, Adventure Moto. Which, if you actually saw the last riding video I made, I pulled in there and it was Adventure Moto with the SMS Racing their trailer, and I was like, uh huh, you know, I did this thing like that. Why is this here then? If this is an SMS Racing, it's like owned by the same people. Uh, and everyone that works here knows the people that work over there, and they work up there. And I think they sometimes, you know, they they do this. <laughs> Adam up there asked me, he's like, hey, do you want to uh, come up here and get your swing arm and linkages? They're ready. Which really, without the shock, it's like, what am I gonna do, bolt that on? It's actually less convenient because the bike, I'd have to lift the bike up off of this this piece of wood it's sitting on. And get it, it, without the wheel and everything, it's like, dude, I'll just wait, man. The thing you don't see is all the wheeling and dealing for this thing that I've been doing on the side, talking to people, trying to figure out stuff. Like in real time, I'm still trying to like, kind of plan this build out and exactly what I'm gonna do with it, where it's going and who I'm working with. I could have been patient and not even revealed it and waited a few months. I thought about that, you know, until I really got everything squared away, but. I'm really passionate about this XR project. It's something I've always wanted to build. So that's kind of why you're seeing it in this sort of real time here. I've been having like dreams of this thing being ready and like just ripping wheelies on it because I'm so, I'm getting cabin fever hard. See this, this, this is all like parts right here. Some of this stuff needs to be thrown away. And then there's another just pile of stuff over there behind the bike. I need to kind of organize a little better. How about this? How about I take this old DRZ S fender right here and we'll cut it up and make it the uh, supermoto fender. That would take some people off. I'm not doing that. I've got it all pretty spread out there. It's good to look at it like this, because honestly, I, I've made lists and stuff of things you need to do, but there's so many things on this that just looking at this pile, I'm like, oh yeah, this and that and this and that. Oh, oh. Yes, 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 yes. Still a handful of things you need to buy little rebuild kits for, but there's a lot of this stuff that's not going back on the bike. Stock carburetor, stock speedo thing. I had a lot of comments about this thing where y'all were like, Jake, that's not the stock speedometer that came with the bike. It actually is. This is an OEM part. I mean, I'll keep also like the big gas tank. Some of those things I, I'm gonna box up and you know keep with the bike even though they're not going back on, but a lot of them I'm gonna throw away. This radiator, don't really see much point keeping this thing. So a lot of stuff I'm probably just kind of go through and start chunking in the trash, making sure I've got whatever little bits need to come off of it. Does anyone want this crap? I know it seems dumb to ask, it's just junk. It's not like you can use this on, so, like someone's gonna be like, well, I, I'll make it work. I mean, I guess, well this thing wasn't leaking if you were real, Real careful with this thing. You definitely could make it work. Not now. Does somebody want this? Like the, like this was Jake's stupid bike. I, I always think that's dumb, but there's people that always bring it up. I think there's most of y'all probably listening to this right now, shaking your head, going, "Do I want your junk for Jake?" Some of these random fairings and stuff. Do, do you guys want that crap? Maybe take it to one of the meets or something. I'm not shipping it anywhere. That's ridiculous. I'm asking two bros about the exhaust. Y'all think you can make something for the XR? He goes, "I don't know. I'm, I'm already, I've already gone home for the day." I'm just gonna reply. Unacceptable. Go back right now and make me an exhaust. So this all needs to go in the garbage. Oh, nobody wants this. It's the old throttle thing. We got a new one with the new clutch or the new carb that's going on. I, I think I'm safe to throw away this brake line. The bike only had a small oil leak. Don't don't worry about that. Everything's chewed up and beat up. Like I know there's not a ton of stuff to update y'all on right now. We're gonna at least make a little short video and explain where we're at right now. Oh yeah, let me show you uh, for Patreon. I'm gonna show you all the wheels real fast. Otherwise, if you're not a Patreon, it's the end of the video.